Welcome to the Gourds and Pomegranates podcast, talking common sense for church communications. Here's Hannah and Joe. Today is one of those where for a while we've said content repurposing, content repurposing, like it's something we mention so often. And we've said that probably should be an episode all of its own. And so we, we're doing that today. <laughs> we're talking Done about it. content repurposing. Um, and essentially, you know, there's an element of which that's quite self-explanatory of, of what it is. It's reusing content that you've already got, um, you know, ideally something that's already been created, but using it in just a, a slightly different way, a uh, different format. Um, so, for example, you know, on the most basic level, it's to reuse the written content or the slides for your Sunday sermon at another point throughout the week, like on your social media. That's, you know, the most basic that you can get. And this isn't something that we're talking about to stress you out. Um, but it's something which hopefully can make your lives easier because every week someone stands up the front of the service and they speak from the Bible for 20, maybe 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> and although some of it will be very contextual to the people who are there in the room listening, actually much of it will be applicable to the wider audience and those in your community, people that haven't stepped into your church mm. um, and the people that you want to reach out to. So our aim today is to really practically show what it looks like in action to be content repurposing and we'll sort of cover some basic things that you could do but then some more like stretch goals as well um you know how you can get started but then things that you can do as you get more confident over time so over to hannah yeah i mean i think it's a really helpful thing and as you said already joe it's not about stressing people out because it's we don't want to add to the burden of managing his church comms but it's something that i've had said to me of like I don't know what to put out on my social platforms that isn't just come to the service or that sort of thing. And it tends to be that if you're starting from a blank page, that's where your mind goes to. Exactly, which is logical and, and is is understandable, but it's really difficult to then get out of the what, what else should we be saying. And so just taking a step back and thinking about this and actually how, understanding in a way how the formula of content repurposing works really helps you then to go, oh my gosh, actually we can fill our content calendar really easily. And that's just with what happens on a Sunday without it seeming annoying or repetitive, but it's actually something that will probably be more engaging, more interesting. Your church will respond to it. Mm. And that's not then looking at all the other things that we can be talking about from church accounts and stuff. So I do think it's a really underrated thing that is probably one of the basics that we should be looking at rather than how to live stream with sort of three different cameras. That's very often the first place where churches stress out about yeah. what we're doing. So to get started, the first thing to think about is actually what are your platforms? What are the places that you are on as a church? And within that, what are the breakdowns of what content can be done there? if that makes sense. So if we're on Facebook, well, we could have links to websites. We can have long form content, written content, short form. We can have photos. We can have an album of photos. We could have videos. Instagram, it's just visual, visually led, but that's not to say you can't have written content, but also there's probably stories. That's another thing that people can engage with. So have your list of what platforms you are on and what is the potential or what are your opportunities for content within those platforms and these are the sorts of things that we've covered when talking about a a content plan i guess yeah and and it's i mean even if you don't necessarily do that right now of like oh we don't put videos up we just link to the youtube live stream but knowing what's possible exactly so knowing well we could put a video up right that's something that we could do with this platform and to make it a little bit easier because i found it helpful when talking over this last year I will be using a hypothetical church with some examples. So apologies if ever I sound a little bit harsh on something. Um, I'm not copying any churches. This is made up. But if it sounds a little bit too close to home, I do apologize. Um, <laughs> but for, um, for, for this of thinking about how we repurpose content, my hypothetical church will be looking at the story of Jonah in a mini series over a month. So that's what we will be talking about and referencing just because it will make it easier if we can give you actual examples of what it would look like. Cool. So 
we're coming up to the Sunday service. It's, um, let's say it's a Wednesday and we're thinking, right, what are we going to pack for the next few days? Hopefully you'd have planned this in advance, but actually going, how do we, how do we do this a bit more what's the word, responsive to what's happening at the minute, because very often ministers or the preachers will not give you that far in advance notice as to what the sermon series would be. Um, And in a perfect world, you know, it would be amazing to have access to preachers' notes first, whether they're a guest or a regular preacher. Um, But if not, the least you'd want to know is what's going to be preached on. And so this can help with your prep for the week ahead. But it's then really helpful of going, actually, we could put something out prior to this Sunday of not just go come to the service and that's it, but going, come to the service. We're going to be looking at Jonah, start of the new sermon series. Um, And actually you could get some sort of questions that will be asked or discussed during the sermon or even sort of things that just help a little bit for people to think about before we go into the service. So if we're talking about Jonah, you know, come to the service on Sunday, we're going to be looking at Jonah and the big questions that we'll be asking over this series, you know, why do we run away from God? Can you run away from God? What to do when we don't like what God's asked us to do kind of thing. And actually that could be something that somebody might respond to generally of just going, actually, this is a really, this is something that I want to discuss. But hopefully then they'll also go, actually, I'd really like to know more. I'll come along to the service or I'll watch the sermon if it's being uh, live streamed. So actually asking some questions gives a bit of excitement and anticipation. And you could share the Bible reading of saying, look, again, we're going to be looking at Jonah. So here's the text to be having a look at so you can come prepared beforehand. But again, it's just helpful to know actually this is what's going to be spoken on. So you don't kind of come in just going, I don't know where to be having my head kind of thing. Yeah. And so I guess the the bare minimum here is knowing that there's going to be a sermon series on Jonah and roughly what it's going to be each week. So so you can then if nothing else, like you say, you can put out the Bible reading that people can prep, or you can put out the sermon title. And that way you're, you're not really repurposing content, but at least it gives you ideas in, in planning yeah. and, and easy ideas that you can do. Yeah. But you can take it a step further by actually engaging with your, your pastor, your vicar, whoever's going to be preaching, and just trying to dig a bit deeper so that you can have those in advance. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it's very hard to come up with those questions and do it in a way which is going to be in line with the sermon if you have Mm. nothing to go on so I guess that's why it's a bit of a two-way relationship there and it just you're still inviting people to come to service on a Sunday you're just adding something and you're adding something different to the content rather than come to service on Sunday come to service on Sunday you're going join us as we start Jonah join us for week two of Jonah and it just seems different when people are looking at what you're posting out there and it just seems like stuff is different rather than if it's the same picture the same quote or, or the same come to join us on sunday it just then you're like i don't feel like well, people it's switch be off but probably the algorithm switches people exactly. off of you as well so yeah yeah it avoids repetition it just it focuses the mind in a little bit and actually it's not much extra work to do that not at all and then for the uh, extra stretch um, for this on still, um, we're just before the Sunday, so we've not done anything yet. If you've got a weekly newsletter or even fortnightly or monthly or something before you're starting the preach is include it in your newsletter. You know, it, again, you don't have to go like, this is what's happening every single week and this is the exact reading. But, you know, for the next month, for the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at Jonah. Here's the reading and here are some questions that if you've written them in the, to go on social of, you know, why do we run from God? Add that in there. It makes people think. Mm. And even you could say like, you know, it'd be lovely to hear your thoughts on maybe not why do we run away from God, but you know, have it been like, actually let's have a discussion about this as a church. Yeah. And that, that then links onto, you know, blog posts that you can create Mm -hmm. that longer form content. And again, this is something which is best done in partnership with the, the person or with the people who will be preaching, but there's no reason not to have a blog post to sort of, explore a little bit further of the sort of themes that will be coming up and you know something we used to do was a video whether that was like an interview sometimes we did a little like round table discussion sort of thing which is entirely faked and (laughs) but it was people asking each other questions about uh, i think it was the book of james and what themes we were going to come up with what like words might stick out and what they mean and it, I found it, even as the one producing the video, is really helpful mm-hmm. ahead of the sermon series that it just got your mind in gear for the next however many weeks that was going to be. Yeah. Obviously, that's a lot more work than just posting on social media, but 
it might be you're doing some of these things anyway and you're scrambling for content ideas so this is a really good place to start yeah exactly and the thing is as well of like if you get into a habit of doing it and and you build the obviously the culture within the church of going yeah. if you're preaching or you're gonna come and preach alongside that and hopefully it's no extra effort could you come up with a few questions mm. whether that is for people listening and then going away of going of not just oh, i've heard a sermon cool i'm leaving now but of going what is the response of do i do i need to is this something i need to work on me about is this challenging me or is this encouraging me and just sort of saying to those who are doing the preaching like actually could you come up with a few questions that either we can put up beforehand or that we can put up after that sort of dovetail into what you are going to speak on or what you have spoken on? Mm. Because surely if they've written it, they've probably asked those questions or they've inadvertently written around it, but actually yeah. we just haven't written down so that we can use it. Yeah. And that's where I think the ad, the admin part of the church comms role comes in because mm you are repurposing content. It's just content that you don't necessarily have yet. But actually, if the preachers are already put in that work, then then they have it. Yeah. And I guess just to sort of close the circle on things in advance of the Sunday or the Sundays, creating PowerPoint designs is something that you can do. And that can help. You know, we've talked before about sermon series designs and how mm -hmm. they can definitely take up way too much time. Yeah. But if you're doing that the right way and you're having a template which doesn't take you ages to create and just keeps that, theme like that mini brand together throughout the sermon series that can be really helpful so you don't need to have the content to be able to do that you've probably already created a graphic to promote the sermon yeah. series so off the back of that creating a powerpoint that can be used each week and can save the preachers some work because they don't have to design it they just put their content in mm. then that that is really helpful as well you know thinking around this whole idea of bringing all of the content of the sermon series together mm. and it it then helps then with the stuff after the Sunday of, mm. oh, that was the Jonas slides. And then there's posts going up around the Jonah sermons and they've all got the same, like, yeah, not, not copy and paste exact. The same theme. It's, same, yeah, 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 exactly. It all fits together. And it's really nice when it, it does all just click and yeah. it isn't something which happens overnight. But as you say, when you build up that culture, it all feeds into each other because you're mm. all helping each other and it, it, obviously helps the output of the church as a whole yeah and it just i don't want to say, it just looks a lot more professional and actually there's an intentionality and thought and purpose behind what is being put out rather than comic sans and various different times new roman or whatever fonts and um and you know uh, different slides of different colors and so and it just you kind of go actually i'm too focused on that rather than actually what's being preached on and We've said it before of like, the devil does not have a monopoly on good design. And I think it is <laughs> giving glory to God by doing good design. Then going on to the Sunday itself. So Sunday's here. You know what's been preached on. You've shared out some of the reading lists beforehand. Some basic level, obviously, you just need the preach. You just need whoever it is speaking. And ideally doing either a live stream or at least recording. We'll hope it's a video recording, but even an audio recording is better than nothing. But it's not essential. You know, if if you don't have that, then it will make things a little bit more difficult with your repurposing, but it's it'll just be more manual. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't need to be like, again, three cameras and mm. a high tech thing. You could just have someone with a phone so long as you've got kind of the basics of, of reasonably good audio and stuff that actually it that can just be better than nothing yeah and to be honest even if that's an internal recording an internal resource that you're not putting out for whatever oh, yeah. reason then yeah. that's still really helpful for your repurposing purposes <laughs> purposing purposes yes because you might want to take something from what's been said and not just notes that you've written down but if you go oh they said it in such a cool way can't remember what he said and he probably <laughs> might have not had it pre-written and he's just sort of speaking on in the flow um of the spirit and stuff and and that you know they can't remember exactly how they say it so it is just really helpful to have a recording just to be able to reference back to now i think it's really good as well is to make notes of what i don't know things that stick out to you whether that's really good things of like oh let's get a clip of that or we can sort of follow on a question from that i always think it's really helpful as well to 
see if there's other people that can help making notes because if it's just one person you might be in a thought process whilst they're speaking and also it's nice to include other people so maybe it's someone yeah, who's not different in- perspectives yeah exactly but it's nice of that it might not be someone who's particularly techy but saying to oh bob you're very thoughtful <laughs> um you know could you make notes of just you know things that stick out for you that are really good and actually it's a really lovely way of including different people within the church family to be a part of this comms process so if that's the absolute basics there that obviously the sermon's going on ideally you get a recording video or audio but making notes the one thing which is like a slight extension that is still one of those basic things slight extension is you can think about timestamps as well. So if yeah. you have a recording going on, then you can make a note of what time or at least roughly how far into the sermon it is. Because you yeah. go, right, I know that I'm going to be able to share that in the week mm-hmm. rather than having to scout through the whole thing. You've got that idea. Yeah, exactly. So if you, yeah, that's that's what I was just thinking as well of like just making a note of it so you don't have to copy exactly what they've said. But you know, at 10 minutes, that was a really good point. And that can be very, it just streamlines what you're doing. Mm. So then if we're going on to stretch ourselves on the Sunday, what can be really cool, nice, lovely, if again, everything aligns up with it of whether you've got the the right equipment, the right team to be able to do it, because we don't want to say this of then you feeling pressured to make notes, remember things, likelihood then if you're trying to record, so monitoring the cameras, take some photos, do it if you can and if it works for those within the team but pictures can be really helpful because it can be really cool if you've got a guest speaker or if you've just got your lovely regular minister preaching but they always tend to sort of use the same nice pictures and then it becomes again that bit repetitive then actually having some nice pictures of them looking different or from different angles that's not sort of a far away screenshot from a live stream it's just having a little catalogue of photos that you can use within either promoting the next time a speaker comes to visit or just of going, this is our minister and it's, he's not always wearing the same gray shirt. Um, <laughs> he has. And it might, you, you know, that catalog doesn't mean that you have to use every single different angle, or every photo you take yeah. in the post that week. You know, it may be that actually it's going to work better with a stock photo, dare I say it, mm-hmm. but just being able to capture stuff so that if you need to use it, it's there is really yeah. helpful as you've said, just taking into account the other responsibilities that you probably exactly. will, will have. And so, again, we don't want this to be another burden. But at the same time, yeah, it's a helpful thing. And obviously taking photos is something that we've talked about before. We've had a whole episode on how to approach taking photos in, in your church context um, and, yeah, what that looks like. Yeah. And actually just thinking about it, it's not so much just them preaching and just sort of like standing ones, but if they're doing a demonstration or something, um, even minor, but just if there's sort of an action thing, that can be quite a, a nice thing to sort of visually stimulate when you're sharing content later on in the week. Yeah. So the service is then over. It's been fantastic. We've learned lots about this first part of um, Jonah and him turning away from God actually having a chance to f- listen to those in the congregation or those who've listened to the service take the opportunity of that coffee time post service of going so what did you think what were you challenged by what were you encouraged by what didn't you like no we don't really want to be asking people that but of just sort of see what resonates with people and what are things that actually you can use for content later in the week of of someone going oh that was really interesting i'd never heard it taken from that perspective or it's really nice to know that they experienced it too and Mm. they probably had you know a lot more i'm not say tangible relationship with god but but god probably feels a lot more present in those biblical times than he did you know to us now and so it's nice to know that jonah felt that way as well Mm. and actually you can share that out of going it was really interesting you know have have a quote from someone you've not had to write that you've not had to make that up you've literally taken what Dear Doris has said, um, <laughs> and it's just assuming you can persuade Dear Doris to speak in front of the camera. But again, that's a culture thing that if, if people get used to it, I think yeah. something else that's helpful here is that you can potentially, you know, we're talking about repurposing. You can use the questions that you came up with last week to put out in advance of the sermon mm-hmm. to ask people after the sermon. You know, it mm-hmm. might be that you tweak them slightly, but that then gets into a cycle of. You're creating a set of questions. You're putting them out there for people as they reflect on the passage before the Sunday. 
And then straight after the sermon, they've got a chance to reflect on that with those same questions. And you can do it week on week. Mm, mm. And I mean, not to push people too much, but an extra, extra thing that we could be doing (laughs) is, again, creating that culture of sort of engagement and discussion is whether you could have like little cards or something that if people don't want to be on camera, but at least you've got a bit of a feedback of like, what was your key takeaway? You're not asking for feedback of whether you liked the music or worship or coffee or biscuits or whatever like Hmm. what's your key takeaway because actually again that can feed into content that you're creating or if you don't want to print it you could have a little google survey or something where people know that actually if i wanted to share my thoughts here is a sort of pin board of where i can give some thoughts that might be helpful to the comms team i don't want to say it's not about going i don't like that preaching style or that wasn't very good but actually of just like yeah Here's something that we want to we wanna ask people to contribute to what we're putting out there because actually that will help people. Yeah, it helps people. Stories resonate. So exactly. it, it shows that it's not just one person that's sharing it. It's actually a whole church, a whole body of people who are living lives together and you're putting these stories out there and seeing how God's word is changing people. Yeah, Exactly. I think maybe it's a case then of sort of how you phrase those questions and that, that goes mm. as much for if it's on camera as if you're doing like a, a postcard. But not saying what did you think of today but saying what resonated with you or yeah like you say what did you you? find difficult yeah what challenged you yeah what's encouraged you because it's also nice is not to ask people always what's sort of um depressed them or angered them but actually what's what's been a nice thing to take away yeah what we've covered so far is i guess the prep work for the content repurposing Mm -hmm. that we're not necessarily doing a whole lot extra than what usually goes on in the run up to or on a Sunday itself, but it's setting ourselves up for the rest of the week and going forward. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? The rest of the week. Okay. So on Monday, then we've had the sermon and what is, again, it's, it sounds like it's a lot of effort, but actually once you get into the habit of it, it, it becomes a lot easier and, and you're sort of, you, it doesn't require so much thought process. Publish the whole service, publish the sermon itself, and whether that is just as audio, so whether that's for your website or even on a podcast platform, really great for people to subscribe to of being able to access that content, or as a video on YouTube, on Facebook, so that people can watch again, whether that is just the sermon, which that's brilliant on its own, or the whole service, it can be a real blessing to people, especially if they're away or looking to connect with your local church. It's a wonderful way of just sort of showing them what it's like. Yeah. And you may already be doing that bit. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So if you're already doing it, then there's, there's nothing extra. But it's just thinking about if you've got the whole service, that breaks down to the service, the sermon, and that's videos. Then you take out the video side and you've got the audio. Mm. So that's like three bits that you can share out and that that are reaching different people. Just remember with video, and actually it's kind of important, I think, with audio as well, just give sort of top and tailing them properly of just Mm. going like, this is the preacher, because maybe in the notices you said, oh, we're really looking forward to Joe, who's visiting our church and he's preaching on this first section of Jonah, of just putting it, you don't need to have like an announcement as such, but just having it either in the description or in the kind of like almost opening credits bits of just a five second preacher topic and reading or something, Mm. whether that's been done earlier in the service. Yeah. It doesn't need to be loads of extra work, No, but it is an extra step. Um, You know, it's worth saying that it's not essential, but it's the sort of thing that actually that little bit of extra work can go a long way. So having, if you've got a little slide of your logo that you put at the beginning, Mm -hmm. if you, you know, like at the beginning of this podcast where we we have the voiceover in the intro and the lovely voice of Martin who introduces (laughs) us each episode, it's just those little things that, it's not about being professional, but it's about just tying everything together and it feeling like something that you want to engage with. Mm. Uh, and it's not that he does the new one every week <laughs> for us. It is just a recording. So it's you just sort of essentially click and dragging it into where you need it. Yeah. But I do think it gives a, yeah, it gives a good experience for those watching or listening to it. So then we can actually use the content from the sermon for other posts. And this is where you really sort of find the riches in filling the rest of your week with what's being preached and discussed and how that feeds then into the following week. So it's really helpful if you've got the preacher's notes 
whether that is either a full talk or just bullet points, brilliant to be able to use. Yeah. If you're like lifting directly from what they've written, then that sort of oftentimes they're going to have headings and like points yeah. highlighted, which are the key points which help you to bring it out from there anyway. Exactly. Yeah. But if actually what they've said has been really helpful, and again, it's not about you needing to transcribe it all yourself, there are so many different softwares or systems that you submit a video to or audio to, and it will do a transcription of it. And so maybe it's not absolutely perfect, but that can be really helpful of going, there we've got the full text, and you just pull out then the bits that you like. So again, oh, I really like that quote about trying to now think of a Jonah uh, <laughs> reference or what might be but it's, it's you know if you've if you've whether you've time stamped it or whether you've just highlighted yeah. it or made a little asterisk in, in your notes like even then if you take the recording the video audio and you get a tool to transcribe it then you can find it quicker probably than if you're scrolling through the video oh, yeah. but you can also then literally just copy and paste it like exactly there is so much strength in using what are out there as free tools now for transcription mm-hmm and taking the audio and video content and just making it text that you can then use for other things. Yeah, yeah. And either then, so actually then where and how do you do it? So either you could just put it straight as within the text boxes on your platform or, you know, if you're feeling particularly creative. And again, Mm -hmm. this is not about making new stuff, but of just using the tools and resources and templates that you've already made, create some graphics. So use the Jonah theme graphics that we use to say, this is the reading. And here's a quote from the fishes in our lives or the the whales in our lives that that we might face. Um, And, you know, that's then on theme for the graphic design of it. But you've used a quote from this week's sermon and then you could share it. And then in the text box, you could write something a bit like, oh, wasn't it great? Here's a link to it. But here's our, here was a quote that was really popular and people were talking about. Yeah. And again, if you've taken some photos, so maybe, I don't know, Joe, who's come and done the talk for this week's sermon, he brought a big, fluffy whale fish toy thing that is one of his kids. It's not his, but he's um, he's referencing of like how big Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'm getting distracted on this really cool sermon that you've given. <laughs> um, but if you're there with a whale, actually, that's quite a fun picture to share. And, and you're talking about the picture is related to the quote. And that could be quite good. Of again, it's linking that connection of like, oh, that was the guy that spoke. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Oh, yes, we're going to re listen to it. Or I've heard him speak before. And it just helps to kind of almost. Yeah. It's visually interesting for the people exactly. who who weren't there but it's actually also kind of stimulating and and re-engages the people who mm. who were there yeah i think just with that example if there is an illustration i'm not going to go back into the example but <laughs> if, there, if there is um you know something that that you take a photo of and it's really helpful like just always go a little bit wider or leave some room yeah. in the photo because if you're going to be putting text on top of it which you may not the text may just go yeah. in the caption but if you're going to make it more of a graphic and have an overlay and that sort of thing then you don't want that to go over the image so you can't see it and you can't read the text. You need to leave some some room around for it. Yeah. And again, that I think gets improved with experience and doing it more often because you think about actually, how do I want this to look? So if we're doing it here, okay, maybe we're going to be looking more upwards Mm. where it's a whiter background rather than my bookshelf where you don't want to put a quote on the bottom there because Mm. you wouldn't be able to see it. So yeah, that just happens the more you do. So it does get sort of it, yeah, easier. Yeah, it definitely comes with, with practice. And I think, yeah. as we've said, it might be that taking stills in the service is yeah, too much be. for you. So you can use screen grabs from the video, assuming that that you've mm-hmm. got even a simple video recording from the back. And if it is just the single locked off camera that's always at the back or a phone, and you don't want to use that every week, you want to vary it up. But there's no reason not to use that occasionally mm. with a text with some quote from the sermon. Yeah. And actually just one thing I find kind of a cheat of if I go, oh, that picture's not great. I don't want it as like a focused picture because it's a bit blurry or something is that using it as a background and putting like a colored filter over it and then the text over the top. So you still can see what it is, but actually it's not that it needs to be perfectly in focus to be able to properly see it. Yeah. So what's the extra stretch goal then for, you know, when you're starting to actually share the content in the week? 
Okay, so we've got the videos. We're going to chop them down. So I really like that whale reference. So <laughs> we, I want to do a 20 second, 30 second clip to share out on socials. Now, we could go into a whole thing about resizing and stuff like that. We're not going to stress about that. It's just about trimming it down and going, we've got these short clips that, again, you don't, this is when you don't need to stress about topping and tailing as such and making it sort of like, oh, I need some intro music stuff. You sort of just want, if you think about the big churches that are online, you know, they're not going, oh, this is from this sermon and, and this. They just go, this message, this 30 second message is really important. And we just want you to see it. And maybe there at the bottom, there's a sort of a, a slight icon of either the church or what theme it is. But it's just about finding those tweetable moments. Mm. And whether you've got two, three, five, ten from a service of just going, actually, this is really good stuff. And we don't need to just share it all this week. Maybe we're going to share it afterwards. We're going to share it over the summer when we look back of what we've done so far this year. But just going again, it's either time stamping or making a note when, when listening to the service of going, oh, that was really good. That was really good. That big good one. And then you can share these out on, so if it's Facebook, you can just put them out either as a reel because Facebook now does reels or just as a short video. You can put them out on Instagram, either as videos or again, reels. And I think that if you can do it in the content form that that platform likes, that's really good because that's a good way of feeding into the algorithm slightly and just makes it a bit more sort of popular. So if you can't, you know, reels are, reels are quite good and you can resize them and crop them down and stuff. But again, don't worry, it's, it's better for yeah, something to go out. you don't have to worry too much about it because if you scroll through any of these sort of portrait formats, which are designed to just keep you scrolling to the next mm. video, they're not perfect. They're not mm. pixel perfect. A lot of them are cut off in slightly awkward places. And unless mm -hmm. they're those really annoying ones that loop around again and again, you find yourself watching halfway through the second watch. <laughs> like, yeah. They don't need to be pristine. And actually, yeah. even in terms of putting your logo on it, the chances are your logo is going to be there because people are watching it connected to your social media account. So it's, it's mm. not the end of the world for, for this uh, format. No. And like you say, when you go to post that video there, you don't need to go away and cut it up in advance if you don't want to, because you just drag the video in and then you choose the bit that you, you yeah. want to share. And that can be a really quick, simple thing. The chances are when you do it, say you do it on Instagram first, it's going to save it to your camera roll as that clip in that format, yeah. which you can then go and put on YouTube or you can put it on TikTok or wherever yeah. else. So save yourself some time in that sense. But oh, don't, yeah, absolutely. don't let this be something which scares you off because it doesn't have to just be something the big churches do. Mm. It's something that if you've got that video, you can do fairly quickly. And yes, it might sound scary to do 10. So do one. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that one might go alongside one graphic and one photo with a quote that you're putting out in that week. And you've got three pieces of content. So that's mm -hmm. three, potentially three days in the week uh, leading up to your next service that you've already got yeah. content for, that could be enough. And they're all different and they're all different ways for people to engage with it. So mm -hmm. again, you're not repeating stuff. You're not dulling the algorithm. Like you're not, you're stimulating the algorithm of going, we are creating lots of different types of content and of different lengths. You know, we're putting up some longer videos, we're putting up short videos, we do different things. And yeah, as, as you said already, Joe, of like you put it on Instagram and you share it directly to TikTok. And I mean, that would be a great way to sort of start experimenting with a new platform of just by putting in clips and snippets of sermons. You don't have to put the whole mm. thing on there. And I mean, we talked about the questions that we could ask people afterwards. That's mm -hmm. obviously another type of content that you can mm -hmm. put out. But it could be that if it's tied so closely, like it's someone's reaction to the sermon straight after just walking out, they've got their cup of coffee and you've shoved the camera in their face. And so it, the chances are it's going to relate fairly closely, hopefully to um, what's just been said. So it might be that actually you take a 10 second clip of someone talking and then you put the 15 second clip of the part of the sermon they were talking about back to back. Mm. And that is another type of content immediately. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. And again, whether you are able to make notes during the sermon and, and sort of timestamps, I mean, I do find it helpful to have a timer mm. just on my phone if 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 I'm needing to think about what timestamps I need to be cutting to or sort yeah. of uh, going referring back to later. But again, there's some awesome AI tools that will find and upon your approval, will clip out then mm. sort of key parts and highlights that they think will be relevant and helpful. Yeah.
And so why not utilize them if they're they're unavailable? So you don't have to spend hours re-listening to it to go, actually, I did like that and I didn't like that. Yeah. And so as an example, that's something that we use for this podcast mm. that we will, it, we don't have to upload it because it's already recorded in, in the platform that we're recording it on, but you basically click a button and it will go through, it will transcribe it. And then it will say, here are five clips, which we think are helpful bits from the, you know, from what you've just said, from your content yeah. that you've already made to share out. And you go, yep, like those ones, don't like those ones. It will then save them, you download them and you can literally share them with the captions or whatever. Yeah. So you can go that extra step and have logos and captions and colors and all of those sorts of things without too much extra work because the tools are doing it for you. But again, Don't if that them. is all too scary, then just do one clip, do it on your phone, done. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're then sharing it out, it's really helpful to like group them in playlists. So YouTube and Facebook put them in albums and stuff because actually then it helps. So we've finished the whole of the Jonah series. If you've enjoyed our Jonah series, here are the sermons and like we all, or we've put together a playlist of the full sermon clips and even some references afterwards of them. And so it's just really great then of people being able to refer back to it or if they missed one week of just being able to find it or they go, oh, I really want all the highlight bits because they were, I found them very encouraging. Yeah. And it creates that longer term content as yeah. well that that is you know relatively evergreen. It doesn't change, and you can have it always on your YouTube channel that people can refer back to. Mm-hmm. It could be that you this time next year say we did this last year, and you can have a blog post about it and just reflect on it. But it's yeah, it gives that longevity to it that isn't just come along next Sunday for the next part of Jonah. Um, although that's good as well because it's it's yeah. good to be able to use what we talked about last week not just as a reminder of what we talked about and a, an application and trying to encourage people to apply it to their hearts and their lives, mm-hmm. but actually as a reminder to say, yeah, do come along next week, but in a yeah. way that isn't just a come along on Sunday, come along on come Sunday, on come Sunday. along on Sunday. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And again, if like, if you've been asking these questions online, either before the Sunday, after the Sunday, you've shared sort of people's responses and stuff of just being able to put up if this has resonated with you at all, you know, with the last of our Jonah series next Sunday and Jay's going to come back and talk to us um, about... Um, Jay's not committing to doing this much preaching, I tell you. <laughs> but in that, you you know, we're talking about what's been said. Has this resonated with you? Have you had a, a, an emotional or re- say reaction? That sounds really kind of like, that sounds stressful. But sort of, <laughs> have you listened to it and found it helpful? We'd love you to join us for the last one. So again, yeah, you're using what has been said to sort of like engage and go, come along to the next one because it's going to be cool. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, we've talked a lot about social media content here Mm -hmm. and kind of including YouTube in that, even if it's longer term, but why not have a blog post as Mm -hmm. well? If that's something that, again, we've talked about it, we've talked about blogs and and how how to use them well and how not to bother with them. Um, But Mm -hmm. you can have a blog post with the full transcript of that sermon, which might be something that some people will prefer to actually watching it or listening Mm -hmm. to it, that they can read it and they can pick out the bits that they want. Maybe then they can copy and paste bits for their own social media if they want to. Yeah. But there'll be some people who will prefer that. You know, certainly you can skim something a lot quicker when it's text like that. But also that increases the chances of other people outside of your church finding it if they are looking for, maybe they're asking questions about the Bible and about Jonah. Maybe they're asking questions about suffering or um, calling and whatever Mm -hmm. other things come up, you know, other themes in, in that sermon series. But having that full blog post there, and you can still include the audio and video recordings, you can include links to them. But what you can also do is have calls to action. So you can encourage people to actually get in touch with you to ask for prayer. So it's not just about coming along on Sunday, you know, especially if that blog post might be seen by someone in six months or a year's time, (laughs) that the next Sunday isn't going to be about Jonah anymore. Otherwise, it's quite Mm. a long series on quite a short book. (laughs) But, um, you know, by you can have people get in touch to ask for prayer or mm. or it might be that you actually um, have future events links below or at least a link to where the future events can be found yeah. so they can see the next thing that's that's coming up. Yeah. And then obviously with this blog post that you produced, you can still share a link to that as well. And that's another social media post to say, go here to see the full transcript. Okay, it sounds a bit boring, but go here to see the full recording and all, all of that. Yeah. And sort of finally on the blog post, they can all be linked together into a category so that actually if someone wants to click on that category of Jonah, they can see all the blog the... post for each week 
with the yeah. transcript but they can also see any other post you've done like the intro that we said at the beginning or perhaps like a summary at the end a conclusion to the series as to what to look back on and it might be that the videos that you've put together in that playlist work quite well to link in there and just again tie everything together without having to actually think about and create from a blank page any extra content yeah yeah and it just feels like you're then updating your website not with new stuff like you're not writing blog posts from a blank sheet writing something you're just writing it on the stuff you listen to on sunday that you've got these resources anyway yeah so you're just essentially compiling them in a slightly different way then people looking at your website so yeah whether they're asking those questions or they're local and they're going oh i will keep walking past this church mm. oh they keep posting stuff oh <laughs> they must be doing things because again if, if someone's looking at your website and you've not updated it you're still putting up oh summer 23 yeah they're gonna be like well they're clearly not doing anything so actually having your yeah p- putting that stuff on there even if people can access it from other places it's just sort of a nice way of bolstering what's going out on your website yeah so hopefully this has all been a helpful summary i suppose of of what content repurposing might look like you know we've only looked at really the example of the sermon on a Sunday, but that mm. tends to be the main sort of long, really long form sometimes piece of content that the church is putting out. So it's a good starting place. It could be that there's other stuff going on in the church that you can repurpose as well. You know, we've talked before and and today a little bit in terms of getting people's stories. That's another way of repurposing because you might record that story once, but then put it in loads of different formats in the same way that we do with the sermon. Mm. Um, so all of this to say, don't be freaked out by it. Um, but hopefully it's something that you can use to just take you wherever you are, take you on that next step, rather than having to just have that panic that comes from looking at a blank page and trying to figure out what content you're going to put up there. Mm. So we do hope that has been helpful. And that, again, as Joe said, it's not too intimidating. Um, but if you have your own way of content repurposing or or tips and tricks that you found helpful when trying to reuse what's been done already and how you've shared it out on social. We'd love to hear from you. So do get in touch with us at hello at gppodcast.uk and we look forward to seeing you next week. Gourds and Pomegranates is brought to you by Joe Gallant and Hannah Fleming Hill. You can find episode transcripts and contact the show via gppodcast.uk.